This is Andy Perrault for ID Boxing. I'm joined by what is now only the WBO and Ring Magazine World Champion Josh Taylor here in Liverpool. Josh, how's life treating you? Yeah, good mate. Just getting back into training, as you see, just getting ready to go in for a little session here. So, yeah, good mate. But yeah, it feels weird just saying that now, you know. Uh, obviously, still feel like the undisputed champion, but facts are facts. I'm not anymore, so... Uh, yeah, but they're all fighting for my belts and my leftovers. <laughs> It must be. Is it difficult to like know that you don't hold those titles now? All obviously through your own decision to vacate. Obviously looking towards one fight and one fight only. But as you said, you're you're still seen as the man in the division. You've won all of the fights in your career, and here we are. Yeah, well, the end of the day, like it or not, I, I'm still the man to beat in the one fight division. Um, beating all the champs, beating everybody else. The only I think the fifth person in history to become undisputed world champion. So. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm still the man to beat at the 140 division and uh, I'll prove that I'm still the number one. I believe I'm still the man. I know I am still the number one, so yeah, obviously still chasing the the fight and we're just waiting to see what's happening with it, which is getting a bit tiresome waiting around to get it done, but it is what it is. Yeah, you say, Josh, it is what it is. A lot of people are waiting to hear an announcement on the, the catch-all rematch. Optimistic uh, an announcement will come out soon? Yeah, hopefully. It's looking... Sorry. Um, yeah, it's looking like uh, it's going to be imminent and getting made, um, but it's, I think it's more just waiting on Sky really rather than anything else. I don't know what's, don't know what's going on, but yeah, it's a little bit frustrating. But hopefully, get an announcement soon. Imagine it is frustrating and for yourself. You, you could be looking at you know, 12 months between the two fights. Yeah. Uh, at this stage of your career, that note in particular is that the most frustrating thing? Maybe a lack of activity there. Yeah, it's frustrating. You know, obviously, after the after at the back of the, uh, the WBSS. You know, after that tournament, I was on a great roll. And then obviously, the pandemic come about and put everything on hold. You know, so I've only boxed three times in three years, which is um, frustrating at this point in my career. I feel like I'm in, my, I'm coming in my prime now, and I've kind of it's the most, it's the least active I've been in my whole career, which is very frustrating. But I'm looking to box hopefully three times next year, and maybe three times again next year, the year after, and pick up the activity again. Josh, obviously, it's good to hear about the plans to try to get back active with yourself. Um, last time we spoke, it was out in Vegas when you became undisputed. At that time, you was working with Ben Davison. This time around, we're here in Liverpool. You're working with Joe McNally and Declan. Talk to me about the move here. How are you finding things up here in Liverpool? Yeah, great. You know, I'm, uh, I've settled in really nicely. You know, now I've got a, an apartment and that now settled in. Took a, bit, a couple of weeks to get my, my feet settled in and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's going really well. Really happy with the move that I made. Happy with the lads, happy with Declan, happy with Joe, and yeah, we're flying again. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting back to my old self. What do you feel that's been the most significant kind of improvement in yourself since teaming up here with Joe and Dec? What do you feel they've been able to bring back out of you? Just getting back to my old self, my, my own mindset again, you know, my old, uh, my old challenger mindset, my own getting back to my old style, you know, and ferociousness and viciousness, you know, so yeah, I'm getting back to my old self and I feel good, I feel on fire. We've spoken to Ben since you guys split and he said he was nothing but amicable. You've still got a great deal of respect and a good friendship together still. Uh, was it difficult to, to leave kind of that relationship behind given the success you two had had? Yeah, a little bit, you know, and um, I still speak to Ben. I actually spoke to him, I think it was today, or no, last night. Last night, he messaged me last night and stuff. So, yeah, I still speak to him and still very friendly with him, very close with him, you know, and it's the way it should be, you know, it's, uh, I, I like that, I can still talk to him, he still talks to me, and yeah, ben, Ben's a really good guy, and I, I'd like to take this opportunity to just to, to thank him for the time that we spent together, and, you know, helping me achieve my dream and becoming an undisputed world champion, and creating history, so, yeah, just like, got nothing but praise for Ben, really, I just, I just felt like I needed a change, you know, myself, myself mentally, to, to change myself, so, I had to do what was best for me, you know, and so, it was quite a hard uh, discussion to have, but you know I still got to do what's best for me. You do have to do what's best for you in this next stage of your career. As we say, we're waiting for that Jack Catchall rematch announcement. But over the last year or so, really since the first bout took place, Jack's obviously been very vocal about the fight. Uh, he's called you a, a number of things. Felt that he came out on top, and he's been quite vocal about that as well. Uh, in the most recent months, Josh, what have you made of anything that Jack's had to say uh, about yourself? Not much really, I don't take care of his, his bitching and moaning, I don't really listen to it. Um, I get the fact that he feels that he, he won the fight and he's gutted that he thought he should have won the fight, but then the day he didn't, 
the judges didn't like his style, judges didn't like the way his tactics were. And uh, at the end of the day, it was a close fight, and I've said this in a number of fights. I thought I did an uh, interview, sorry. I thought I did enough to win the fight. It could have went either way, and I got the decision. So it is what it is. He has to fucking swallow it and get on with it. Just as a surprise to you, boy, just how kind of vocal people over online were about that fight who had maybe had Jack Wynn in the fight. Listen, I, I, I don't really care, to be honest. I, I couldn't really give a shit. Um, that's people's opinion. If people. Some people think he won the fight, then cool, that's your opinion, that's what you think, that's, that's cool. It's the other shit that I've been having a problem with, people, you know, attacking myself and my family, sort of thing. Um, not just me, I'm not really bothered about it, but when it's your family, it's getting shit. It's different, like, you know, so this fight is a... Uh, I've definitely got the, the fire in the belly and the motivation and the, the hunger and desire to do a real number this time and say, I told you so, and then to everybody else, a real big fuck you. Something which is a, an interesting one to pick up on there, Josh. Uh, going into that first fight, we never saw, and I don't know whether you'll agree or not, but that bite, that kind of uh, aggression about yourself, the way that we did when you went into your undisputed fight, how much more personal has this become now and how much more fire does it bring to yourself knowing that? This has just gave me the, the fire back in the belly, you know. It's just gave me the hunger to get back to my old self, you know. Um, I was just, I had changed my mentality by the times of, you know, be, become an undisputed world champion and I had sights to go and do and other things and uh, I just lost sight of what I was doing you know um, I had my goals on other things rather than the thing that was right in front of me and that's a mistake that I made and that's a mistake that I tried to learn from other people making in the past but I'm, I'm only human at the end of the day you know and achieving what I've achieved and how ambitious how ambitious I am for to be in the sport and go and achieve other things I took my eye off the ball and uh, you know, I almost paid the price for it, so that will not happen again. You'll hope that it doesn't happen again, so as, as again, we look towards that rematch. Given Shane the ring with him the first time, what happens when it does come around a second time? Uh, how much more of a different outcome do you expect it to be? Uh, it's going to be a massively different outcome. I, um, I don't believe he gets anywhere near me this time. Um, listen, if he can't beat me at my worst, and be, have a very close fight, he's not going to beat me when I'm anywhere near my best not going to get anywhere near me, so that's all I'll say. And uh, I can't wait and hopefully get the fight announced soon and get on. Moving away from him, uh, Josh, obviously you're in a, a very stacked division now. A lot of those 135 fighters moving up recently. Uh, Tfimo fought against Sandor Martin this past weekend and was successful, but quite a few people maybe had Sandor edging that one. Is he somebody who you think has maybe come into the reckoning a little bit more? I know previously you wasn't <laughs> as keen to fight him because he just didn't bring anything to the table uh, title-wise. Well, no, it's a huge fight still, you know, it's a, it's a great fight. Um, i never seen the fight of the weekend. I was travelling back down to Liverpool for being, from being home. So when I got back, I went to my bed and never watched the fight. I just saw the, the stuff on Twitter in the morning, um, saw the result. But no, I never saw a thing. I, I put a thing up on Twitter because he's been talking shit about me for the last, I don't know how many years. Um, but yeah, I've not saw it. But um, I heard it was quite a sort of close fight. A lot of people saying that... Um, Martin won the fight, so I, I don't know, I've not saw it yet, but I, I need, I'll need to go and watch it. He comes away with a, victory, with a victory behind him though, Josh, do you think maybe this year, next year rather now, you two could cross paths? Yeah, possibly, why not? Yeah, definitely, um, it's a huge fight, it's, um, he's a big name, you know, so it would be, there'd be a lot of animosity, <laughs> fucking hell, I can't even say that right, yeah, animosity um, in the build up to the fight. Um, because I don't think there's any love lost between the two of us, even though I've never met the guy, but um, just with the things him and his dad been saying, I think there'll be a lot of uh, tension and build up to the fight and it'll be a huge fight. So, yeah, there's there's lots of options out there for me at the minute. You know, um, uh, they've got the fight with Regis Progre again as well. You've got, I could have boxed in Zapida if I hadn't let go of the WBC. So, I, I'm, I'm not short of any options for, for going forward, you know. So, I'm, I'm not really... Uh, first as to what happens but I'm obviously only after one fight but I can't be waiting around too long too much longer. Before we come on to read just one final thing on TFMA. I know you didn't watch the fight but after he, he asked his team in the ring have I still got it now that's obviously raised a few questions as to if he's maybe in the right mental state and if he's maybe struggling a bit or if he's had too many people in his ear over the years I know a lot of people have been critical of his father and his influence hearing that and being imagining him in the ring saying that what do you make of it? Well, he's obviously doubting himself quite a bit. Um, 
to say that and on camera and front of camera. Um, but he's also maybe he's maybe also got a little bit of demons in there as well. Maybe struggling a little bit mentally and things like that. You know, cause boxing boxing can be a, a, a lonely place. Eh? Like you know, you're in front of the cameras and in front of the, the bright lights and stuff. It can be a, a lonely place. It is only you there. It's in in, in the ring and it's you who takes the criticism and things like that. But there's maybe a lot of things going on around his team and stuff and his family and stuff. His dad maybe doesn't help him either. Puts a lot of pressure on him. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I hope he, I hope he's Okay, but um, at the end of the day, still, I still think he's a dickhead. Uh, I still think him and his whole team are dickheads. But at the end of the day, I don't wish any harm on anybody. And if he's, I hope he, I hope he gets okay. Joshua, something out of um, Regis Progre as well. We saw him pick up that WBC title, as you mentioned. A fight you think we could see a second time around? What was that? Sorry, the Regis Progre fight. Definitely a fight you think we could see a second time around? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a, that's a huge fight as well. You know, the, the first fight was a, a great fight. You know. It, it's so the, the biggest fight I've, I've mostly enjoyed in my whole career. You know, I enjoyed being a, a part of that fight. I'm pretty sure he did as well. You know, and uh, that was a great entertaining fight. And uh, I'm sure it'll be the same if it happen again the next time. Obviously, just looking at the kind of fighters who have been coming up, you got Javonta and Ryan Garcia, who have scheduled to fight next year. Ryan looking to move into 140 division as well. But on that front, what do you make of Tank versus Ryan, provided it goes ahead? I think that's a great fight. Um, I probably probably go towards Tank to be honest. Um, just just through um, skills and you know, better boxing brain. I think um, I think uh, Javon has got the better boxing IQ. Um, I don't know what sizes difference will be, um, but I think Ryan looks a little bit bigger. He's definitely got the speed and stuff, but I think uh, Javon has got the boxing IQ. But yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a great fight to watch. Good. It's about time a fight like that got made with these two guys as well. So. Yeah, um, be looking forward to watching that as well. Tank versus Hank at some point. Yeah, definitely. Why not? You know, um, as I said, I've said in plenty, plenty of uh, interviews before that you never reel anything out in boxing. Anything can happen. So yeah, why not? Um, Josh, just whilst I've got you, you've obviously got Liam Smith, your camera getting ready for a big fight of his own next year. Chris Eubank Jr. Talk to me about it. You've been here now with Liam in camp. How's he looking? How does he go about beating Chris Eubank Jr.? I just think I think uh, again it's, a, it's the same sort of thing with the previous answer. I think his boxing brain and his well-round, his all-round boxing skills and his ring IQ is uh, better than than Chris Eubank. You know, Chris Eubank is he's fast, he's tough and athletic, but his boxing side, his boxing IQ really lets him down. In times uh, when someone's all-round like Liam, who's great in every single uh, department of the game, I think. Uh, Eubanks boxing IQ and boxing brain will let him down. Um, but having said that, it is a very, very good fight because Eubank is quick, he punches hard, he punches the combinations, he's very fit, strong and, and got a good chin. So um, it's going to be a tough fight, but obviously I'll be backing Liam to win. I think he'll, I think he'll do it well. I'll see Eubank Jr. was previously scheduled to face Conor Ben before that fight got cancelled due to the adverse findings in Conor's tests. Um, just kind of touching on, I just wanted to touch on it, very briefly, because I know you're somebody who's been very vocal about PDs who've been boxing previously. We haven't really heard from you about any of it. What did you make of that entire scenario when it first came to fruition and how it's gone since? Well, obviously, nothing's come out yet. Um, they're saying that there's got to be other things coming out that will prove his innocence and stuff like that. But um, at the end of the day, it's he's responsible for what goes in his body. Um, you know, I know he's got a team around him and stuff, but at the end of the day, he's responsible for uh, what goes in his body. So it's down to him, really. Um, not one, but but two failed tests. Um, possibly one you can go right, okay, but two failed tests is it's, it's not looking great, is it? Um, I mean, and to have that drug in your system as well. I mean, a, a pregnancy sort of thing. Um, to, however, that, I don't even know how that gets in your system. You know, um, it can't be through com contamination through food. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not looking great, is it? It's not looking great for him. Um, but I, I believe, it, uh, even if it does come out and people come out and it says he's, he's innocent, it's, he's still, he's, he's not innocent though, is he? He's, he's, he's still been found with that in his system and he's going to have to come up with a, a very, very good um, explanation as to why that was in his system. 
Well, Josh, listen, I, listen, I know you was about to do your training session as our college you here, so I appreciate you doing this interview. It's good to see you. Um, good to see you in good spirits as well, and hopefully we'll get that news and updates soon. Anything you'd like to leave on? Yeah, no, just um, obviously just waiting, patiently waiting for to get this thing done. Um, so hopefully it's, um, it's made soon, and uh, yeah, we can get on. Well, Josh, as always, it's a pleasure to see you. Hopefully we'll see you more, um, more active next year and we'll see you in front of the cameras a lot more as well. So thank you for speaking to me and ID Boxing. Cheers, Andy. Cheers.